Oh, I remember everything about it. It was such a heady time for me, you know. There I was, it was only my second record, and uh, I was just happy to be recording. I mean, that was the high for me then, let alone I didn't even think about hit records. Um, so to have a, a record sort of zoom into the charts and sell 45,000 a day as it did then, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, of course, there were quite a few major artists around at the time that we'll all remember, you know, notably people like Dusty Springfield. The link between her and you, of course, was the producer Johnny Franz, who really gave you that big break. Exactly. I mean, Johnny, I mean, I have to say he was a genius of an A&R man. He, he went on his own instincts. He never asked people, you know, like they do now, should we put this out or that? He said, this is going to be the one. And, of course, he had Dusty, uh, the Walker Brothers. It was great because I used to walk into the studio there and hear Dusty in a, another studio doing her stuff, you know. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful times. How did he find you then? How did you get that opportunity in the first place? My first professional job was with um, the Teddy Foster Big Band at uh, that wonderful Butlins in Filey, that windblown place. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I did two seasons with Ted and he said, look, you really shouldn't continue singing with the band, you've got to start recording. And he took me to Johnny Franz in 1964 and I auditioned in his office, he played piano, he was a wonderful musician, Johnny. Mm. And um, he gave me a contract, a five-year contract straight away. So no looking back from there on. Now the wedding itself was an interesting choice of song as well because um, it had been written by an Argentinian. Whose idea was that for you to record? Well, it was the first record that I did, my introduction into the business really was a rehash of Doris Day's It's Magic. Mm -hmm. And I did all the local television shows because there were loads then that you could do to plug a record on. And I did one for Barry Langford in the BBC Two studios. He was producing Beat Room, which I did with Tom Jones at the time. And he got hold of this record and he sent it to Johnny Franz and said, I think this would be good for Julie Rogers. Now, it had been recorded about eight times before in the States, but they'd done it very straight, very sort of churchy. And I said, well, I love the song, so did Johnny. I said, but the arrangements are terrible, you know. So we had Johnny Arthur do a, you know, a real uh, sort of pop um, version of it, and everything worked out. I mean, mm. it was great. And I remember Johnny saying to me, because in those days you recorded four tracks in three hours and Johnny said after we got you can go out and order your Rolls Royce now and I said oh you got to be joking you know I thought he was kidding me mm. I, I got a mini minor in the end <laughs> <laughs> well no disrespect to today's artists but it's a fact it's a lot easier to have a hit record with a major record company this in this day and age than it was back in the 1960s you know the, the chance to make a record was uh, a great opportunity in those days let alone to get a, a hit in the charts what was it like well I mean, it, it was just incredible because, as you say, I was just happy to be recording. But to all of a sudden be in the charts with, like, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Dusty and Scylla and people like that, it was just amazing. And, of course, we used to meet up on all these Top of the Pops and Thank Your Lucky Stars. I mean, it was, it was a heady time. It was absolutely great. And it opened up all sorts of other avenues for you in terms of performance. And, uh, of course, your records were selling all over the world. You well, know. that was the thing. I, all, my, all my hit records that I had at that time were international, which meant that I was sort of in demand across the world, and, and I've done that ever since. I've travelled around the world performing ever since then. I was, that must be one of the joys of your career, though, the fact that you know some hit records can enable you to go anywhere in the world and people know who you are. It's a fantastic thing. I mean, I've always been so grateful for it. And, like, it's amazing when you're in a place like Thailand and the audience starts shouting out for, you know, oh, you sing the wedding, and they all sing it with you, you yeah. know. I mean, they know the words of all Western songs, and I find that just amazing. You've worked with some of the legends, haven't you, particularly in, in shows like Sunday Night at the London Palladium. I worked with so many great comics, you know, like the the Tommy Coopers, I mean, the Morecambe and Wise, mm. uh, Benny Hill. These people, they are legends, aren't they? And yeah, there's they are, Dawson, definitely. You know, mm. Do you have any favourite memories? Oh, so many. I mean, doing, like, the London Palladium, uh, the, the very first time I did it, I mean, this was a dream come true because every performer dreamt of, of doing the London Sunday night at the London Palladium, mm. and it was nerve-wracking. It really, really was. I mean, I was on there. I, did, I remember the first time I did three numbers. I was allowed nine minutes. And it was like I came off and it was like a dream. I didn't know if I'd been off, on or off. You know? yeah. <laughs> it was so nerve-wracking, but wonderful, wonderful times.
Hey, thanks again for listening to this interview. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button. Make sure you ring that notification bell. Check out all of the other interviews here. And if you can, please help the channel by subscribing. Thank you.